um, there's the uh, uh, the big boy, and this is the recent picture. I just got it off the internet. Somebody wrote big boy on it, and that's what the uh, guys at the uh, factory did. Uh, they were trying to figure out what they should call this thing, the 484, because the, the 4664 was a, was a challenger. But the, the, so, they, so some uh, uh, machinist wrote big boy on it, and the name stuck So at, at American Locomotives. So, um, so anyway, I read a, uh, recently read a book. Good. Well, that, that author really missed it, didn't he? Uh, it's several books, but uh, this was uh, Lucius Beebe, who was, uh, he was quite oh, a famous, really? famous uh, author. I think he worked for the New York uh, Tribune and yeah. very, uh, he owned a railroad car and with his uh, partner, um, uh, Charles Clegg, and very good photographer, a great writer, fun to read his prose. But, but he yeah. was, they, but you know, that was the era he was talking about diesels and you see the, uh, you know, there's the Zephyr 900 horsepower and, and an articulated light, lightweight train. And there's the UP 10,000, M 10,000. These were small, lightweight, fast, but very lightweight trains. And so, the, and the railroads are a very capital intensive, <clears throat> slow industry. And I worked for, uh, you know, as an engineer for the utility and uh, the utility is also a very slow, capital intensive industry that doesn't change very fast. So, but he said, yeah, there'll probably be just some diesels by the year 2000, but steam is still gonna be the main type of locomotive. Well, that was in the in mid thirties. And so my question that popped into my mind is why did steam locomotives disappear so quickly in the 1950s? I mean, it was just, they were just there Funny. and they were gone. So, uh, so to do this, I thought, well, we'll break it down into pieces. First, we'll look at how steam works and why did steam disappear so quickly? And then we'll look at the, what the, the periods of development of steam and how it, how it changed during its, during its hundred and some years. And then we'll also talk about classifications, the Pacific, the Northern, all those type of, and, and so we'll kind of go through this. Well, first we'll look at, at how a steam locomotive works. Okay, over on the right-hand side uh, is the cab, and there's an engineer and a fireman. And you can see there's the engineer on the right, and the fireman's throwing coal into the, into the uh, firebox. Now, the, um, um, if you notice above the fireman's head, uh, up here, there's, there's two sight ga gauges. The fireman really has three different jobs. The first one, most important, more than anything else, is to keep water in these sight water. glasses. Because if they do, if you do not, the engine will explode. And actually, yeah, they did a pretty good job considering there's some 40, 50,000 steam locomotives running around uh, North America. Um, they had a few blow up, but not that many. Uh, they did have a couple of safety features, which we'll talk about, but, but, uh, but they, were, they were pretty good. I mean, it's obviously, it's... <laughs> It's your, it's your livelihood too, being alive. But, um, uh, but you can see, uh, the other thing he's got to do, obviously, is put fuel in the, and you can see this is the grate where the coal sits. And he, he throws coal over here, he throws coal over there, he throws in the middle, he throws in the corners, trying to get a nice even bed of coal so it burns. And so he has, to, he has these valves here, he has to, the fireman has to operate to keep the water in the sight glass. And then the other thing he has to do is when they get out on the road and he's not firing, he has to watch outside of the cab for the engineer. So, so the fireman is throwing coal into this locomotive and the, fire, the coal burns at about 2,000, 2,500 degrees and uh, it's sitting on this, on this grate. Now the, the unburned coal, the ash and stuff like that falls down into this ash pan, which is down here. But the, uh, the fire is sucked out because the air comes in like this under the bed. Um, and then uh, it's sucked down. These, are, these pink things are uh, flues because it's flue gas um, that's going down the tubes. It's sucked down the, the, the flue gas. And this is the boiler. It's full of water. And it has to stay full of water because if it doesn't, the thing will blow up. And then the steam is, is, is heated up. The water's heated up. And then it bubbles up here into the into the steam dome, and then the steam wants to escape. So here's the uh, the connection uh, to the throttle. The engineer has a has a has a lever that opens this throttle, and then the steam goes down this pipe, 
and goes down into the into the valves and then it, it pushes the steam uh, the valve back and it moves the wheel a quarter of a turn and then it pushes steam in here and it 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 pulls the uh the rod back and it moves the steam uh, the wheel another quarter of a turn then the the uh the cylinders on the other side are 180 degree opposite so they pull it this way and this way so that's how the 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 train is able to keep going. Are they 180 oh. degree opposite or 90 degree opposite? 90 degree opposite. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, because it has to it has to make a complete cycle. You're absolutely right. Sorry about that. Yep. Very good. Good comment. Um, and so then the steam exhausts into this nozzle, and then the nozzle blows up, and and then it sucks air and flue gas and carbon dioxide and water vapor and everything through the flues out the chimney. So that's how the boiler gets draft. So it's a fire tube boiler. The it's a tubes, fire tube boiler. Yes, and they did try fire, water fire tube boiler. water tube boilers at the end, but it's it's uh, they're great for utilities and and uh, hospitals and stuff like that. But they're not made to move. They do not right. work well if if you're on a moving vehicle. That's what they okay. learn. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's another reason why the Navy always use fire tube boilers on their ships, and that was because they start up a whole lot faster. Sure. Uh, yes, absolutely. They don't have so much metal. You have steam quicker. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good point. And Ross, so this, where, yeah, where go ahead. Does, where does the condensate go after the steam has been used up in the pistons in the in the piston chamber? It goes right out the chimney. That's the big problem with this, as I discovered. When they first start the engine, there's condensate in the pistons, and that's why you'll see them start. And they're blowing steam oh. out the side of the uh, of the pit of the pistons down here because they don't want it. Uh, they don't want water in there because water is incompressible; it will break the rod. Yeah, lock them. Yeah, um, but it it the problem, Ron, is it goes right on out. It it really does. They don't get much condensation because the gases here are probably you know seven eight hundred degrees, thousand degrees, and so you're not getting much condensation, and uh, and so it blows out. With the with the stack, with the so are you so you're saying then that the uh, water vapor in the steam goes out the stack along with the flue gases? Yes, and that's why you see big white in the winter time. You see these big white plumes. That's where all the that's where most of the energy from the coal is going. It's it, it so needs so your exhaust, Ron. Yeah. Your exhaust from the cylinder. Say it moves one direction. You're pushing the other exhaust out. And that's the condensate and the gas that is going up the chimney. And then you, your valve shifts and you put gas in this side and that whole thing shifts over and that blows out the chimney. Well, if it, now that's if ideal it, world. You know. If it combines with the flue gases, mm -hmm. then what comes out of the stack must be fairly acidic. It is, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, and if you've ever, um, if you've ever ridden behind a steam engine where the the fireman isn't isn't doing the best job or whatever or the coal's wet, um, yeah, you'll get it'll be raining a mild acid, <laughs> mild sulfuric acid. So wow, very mild. Wow, yeah, it's uh, um, so that's kind of the uh, the inside of it. Now this is a superheated uh, uh, steam locomotive. We'll talk more about that. But here's the the cutaway of the boiler. It's actually been cut away. Um, I think at a, at a museum. And so the yellow area is where the, the uh, flue gas goes and these, this is the all water. And then up here would be steam. And these big tubes, are there are tubes inside these big tubes and that's to superheat the steam. And we'll talk more about that. Now the heat is just rerouted. That's right. And so this is from the smoke box looking back. So here are all the flues. With for for uh, for regular flue gas here are the big flues that are are for for uh, that hold steam uh, superheater tubes, and then here are the big pipes that are coming from the from the throttle. To uh, this one goes to this uh, steam chest and valve, and and the this piston. This one goes down to this side, and then there's the chimney. Oops, um, this is a little different diagram. Uh, this is the superheated uh, steam locomotive. Again, blue is water, 
and uh, you want to make sure that uh, you keep this this this. Uh, um, now, uh, uh, they early on they they developed a soft plug that they put right up here, and it's right on the top of the crown sheet, and that's that has saved a lot of lives. If if the uh, fireman ever let the water get a little bit low, this is this is a a it's a metal that was would melt much uh, lower than the mild steel. Mild steel is like 700 gets soft at about 700 degrees, something like that. This thing would would, would melt at about 500. So uh, so it 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 would uh, uh, if 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 there isn't enough water here and that that little plug melts, then it douses the fire with water before the thing blows up. So they did have some safety mechanisms in addition to the safety valve right here um, for overpressure. But again, the, so the, here's, the, here's the grate and then the, the fire would come up here, the gases go down here and then they get blown out the chimney. Now the, here's the throttle valve. You can see the linkage to the throttle valve. And so the engineer pulls back on the throttle and it allows steam into this, this chest up here then it goes through these little tubes and it's, it's saturated steam here. Say this locomotive's at 175 pounds. You know, what, what Ron, what's, what's the, uh, uh, do you guys have a steam or hot water system at Judson? We used to have steam, but uh, not anymore. But it was probably what, 20, had... 20 pounds, something like no, that? It low, no, it was low pressure. It was only four pounds. Oh, four pounds, really low, okay. Yeah. So these are about 170 pounds. Now at 170 pounds, um, the steam temperature is like 335 degrees. Because if you think about it, at, at sea level, you, you boil water, it's at 212. You go to Denver, it boils at about, what, 180, something like that. Um, but but if, you, if you increase it to, to uh, 175 or 200 pounds, you're talking 300 and some degrees. So the steam up here is, is at 175 PSI, uh, 300 degrees, you bring it in here, now you run it in these tubes and you can get it up to 500 degrees. So you're adding additional heat to that steam and it really doesn't cost you anything. So that's how they improved efficiency. Then the superheated steam, which is red here, that goes to the valve now. Now there's one more piece that, that we need to talk about and this, that's this thing that's hooked up to the Johnson bar, the big Johnson bar. Um, that, that is called the cutoff. And that changes the, the linkage here so that as you, as you get going, you want to shorten the amount of time that you're putting steam into the, into the, uh, into the pistons. And so that changes the linkage around so that, so that you're not using so much steam because you, you need a lot of steam when you get started. But once you get going, you don't need that much steam. And that's why the engines have this choppy thing once they, once they really get, uh, get rolling. And so. Okay, uh, here's a different, uh, um, here's the, the, the water tank and the tender. And then there's an injector or, a, or a, just a plain old piston pump, a feed water pump to pump water in the boiler because you have to pump it in at 175 pounds. And the injector will do that. And here's the firebox. Here's what they call the arch. That kind of keeps the fire down here above the, uh, uh, above the grate. And there's a little auxiliary steam dome on this one. Here's the throttle. Here's the sand dome that uh, dumps sand um, as they still do uh, when they need traction or if yeah. the rail's wet. And uh, then the steam comes down here. We saw the branch pipes in, this, in the smoke box. 